this tutorial, we'll explore how to use MATLAB's Maximum Likelihood Estimation Function, or MLE, in order to estimate the values of parameters of various probability distributions so as to fit that distribution as a theoretical distribution to a set of sampled data. Our first example involves the binomial distribution, which we believe to be a distribution that models our process where we conduct 20 independent trials, but we don't know the probability of obtaining a successful or, or um, preferred outcome on any one of those given trials. So we perform that experiment six times, and in those, those repeated experiments, each time we find that there were 12 preferred outcomes, 11 preferred outcomes, 9, then 8, then 10, then 10. We form that data into an array that we set equal to the variable x. Then we go about estimating the parameter p. To estimate the parameter p using the MLE function in MATLAB, we have to provide the data, or x, then we have to tell it which distribution we believe models that data. So we use the option pair of, or option and value pair of distribution and binomial. Um, we request a, um, a a confidence of 95% in our estimate by setting our alpha value to 0.05. And since we know the n or n trials parameter of the binomial distribution to be 20, we set that value as well. When we execute the sample code in a MATLAB script, we see that it displays the sample data that we've stored in the vector x, and then it provides us with our estimate in return to the MLE function of 50% for the unknown parameter p. Parameter estimation is certainly not limited to only the binomial distribution. So we consider another experiment where we continue to repeat in a sequence of independent trials an indefinite number of time until we obtain our first preferred outcome. And during this process, we record the number of failures that we've incurred before achieving that first preferred outcome. And that's the value of our random variable. So this is a process that can be modeled by the geometric distribution. And if we don't know what the probability of success is on any one of these independent trials, or the value for p, then we can use MATLAB's MLE function to estimate it. So in a way that's similar to what we did with the binomial distribution, we will store the data that we've collected from six different experiments where, again, we've sat down and repeated our independent trials over and over again until we have achieved our first preferred outcome and we record the number of failures that were incurred first. And those values each time were 6,054, 4,100, 722, 5,705. 3,186 and 14,909. To use that data to estimate p, we feed it, we feed the value of x that that data has been stored in as an array to the first input of MATLAB's MLE function. Then using an option and value pair, we tell the MLE function that we believe the geometric distribution models our data. And then we request a um, confidence of 95% by specifying that the value for alpha is 5%. There are no known parameters for the geometric distribution in this particular example, like we saw with the binomial distribution, where we specified the value of n trials. So there are no more inputs to give to the MLE function in this example. When we run this code, we find that MATLAB restates the sample data that we've stored in the array x, and then it um, responds with the estimated value for p, or the probability of obtaining a preferred outcome on any given trial, and we see that it's rather low. 
In fact, it's 1.73 times 10 to the negative 4. Since the binomial and geometric distributions both involve the parameter p, which represents the probability of obtaining a preferred outcome in any given independent trial, both distributions are suitable for estimating probabilities or proportions like we've seen in the past two examples. But if we look at something like the Poisson distribution, it involves the parameter lambda, which represents an expected rate at which a preferred outcome occurs over a given interval, time or space. So imagine an experiment where we count the number of times a preferred outcome occurs over or during a particular interval. And um, our, we store that data after repeating that experiment five times into a array in the, in the variable x. And that data is going to, in this case, be 80 times, then 92 times, then 87 times, 95 times, and 97 times. Like we saw with the geometric distribution, we can tell the MATLAB's maximum likelihood estimation function, or MLE, to estimate lambda based on that data by feeding the data itself to the MLE function, telling it that we believe the Poisson distribution models this experiment by offering the option and value pair of distribution and Poisson, and then as before, requesting a confidence of in our estimate of 95% by specifying that alpha is 0.05. When we run the code, MATLAB returns to us the data in our sample, and then it provides us with our estimate of 90.2 for the, the rate parameter lambda. Our final example is an applied example. We'll use parameter estimation for the Poisson distribution and then um, using a mark and recapture method, the hypergeometric distribution, to calibrate parameters of a population model and use that model to make predictions. But we'll have to use experimental data to make those parameter calibrations first. The beberton holt model depends on two parameters r, or the per capita um, growth rate of the population, the intrinsic one, and m, which is a parameter that's related to the carrying capacity of a population. We'll begin by using the Poisson distribution to indirectly estimate the per capita birth rate of our population. The Poisson distribution's lambda parameter can be used to model the birth rate uh, the absolute birth rate of a population, and we'll estimate it by imagining that we have five identical populations in identical environments that initially have a hundred animals in it, and then we count the number of animals that were born over a particular period of time, a, a year in this case. So for each of those populations, there were 80 births, 92 births, 87 births, 95 births, and 97 births. This forms our experimental data set. We'll use it as an input for the MLE function, which we then tell um, MATLAB will be using the Poisson distribution as our model. And we, as usual, request a confidence of 95% in our estimate. So when the MLE function provides us with an estimate of the absolute birth rate of the population, we can translate that into a per capita birth rate by dividing the birth rate by the initial population of, or size of the population, 150, and then adding that percentage to one. And that gives us the annual per capita birth rate of that population. Next, we'll estimate the carrying capacity for this population, which is going to be a parameter that we'll temporarily call C, using the mark and recapture method. So we'll imagine a situation where we go out and capture 75 animals from a population of an unknown size. 
but it's a population that we believe has reached equilibrium. We tag them, we reintroduce them into the population, and then give them some time to settle down. That has artificially introduced a group uh, that, that behaves as if it's a preferred subcategory of our population. So we now know that K for this population is 75. Now we're going to sample 50 animals without replacement from that population and count up the number of animals that are tagged. That's our experiment, and we'll repeat that experiment five times. Each of those five experiments resulted in uh, a count of two, then three, then three, then one, then three tagged animals. That's our experimental data, and we'll save that in the an array that we um, associate with the variable t in our MATLAB program. We'll now just use the hypergeometric functions formula for um, estimating in the total population size based on our data, the mean of our data, and the known size of our preferred subcategory of 75. And this results in a value for the variable that we're calling C, or the equilibrium um, population size once the population has maxed out um, its ability to make use of resources within its, its own habitat. So C becomes our carrying capacity, and through a little bit of algebra, um, C, the carrying capacity, can be related to the M parameter of the beverton holt model um, through the formula M equals C divided by the quantity of R minus 1. Once we have established the um, values for our unknown parameters of, of R and M of the beverton holt model, we're going to simulate that model for various initial values, initial values of the populations ranging from 100 to 2100 in increments of 200 uh, over a time period of 20 years. And we'll just do that within a loop. Then we'll plot each of those trajectories of the population um, based on our estimated parameter values um, over that 20 year time period. Now, if we were to put all of this code into MATLAB and execute it, we'd see that we get an estimate of 1.6013 for the intrinsic uh, per capita growth rate of our population, uh, 1.5625 times 10 to the, 10 to the positive 3, or um, um, a little over 1,500 for the carrying capacity of this population, and then the associated carrying capacity parameter, or M, is almost 2,600. Moreover, when we allow MATLAB to plot each of the different trajectories of the populations associated with each of the different initial conditions, ranging from 100 to 2,100 in increments of 200, then we get a graph like this. And we can see that all of those populations eventually settle down to a level that's just over 1,500, which is no coincidence very close to the value of the carrying capacity for this population. This isn't by accident. This is a particular attribute of these types of population models. For more details on this example, you can look at how it's been written up in more of a physical context in example 4.6 of our course notes. However, we've included this example here because it illustrates that there are more in-depth applications of parameter estimation that go beyond simply finding the parameter value for a given probability distribution simply for the sake of doing so. This was an application that had its roots in biological population models.